big thing about early and mid game fights is utilizing down players as yeah. kind of, you know, strategic forces in an actual fight, strategic places to actually pressure people to come out of their boxes to kind of control the way they move. So if you get to a safe space, no more timers there anymore, right? Hey, hey. The toggle time will come back up. Keep them hostage for a little bit. Yeah. Kind of hold them up. Absolutely. Use that, use that little bit of leverage to, to bait out a team, turn that into a, a winning situation for you. Because one of the one of the cons of going on offense is you expose yourself. Mm -hmm. You're out there, you're vulnerable, you're moving, you're typically not building. And in those situations, that's where you get traded shots. But here, we're looking at retail row. This is what we wanted to focus on. NM7, FHD, and Young specifically have been hitting some disgusting shots over the course of today. The heavy sniper we know to be a favorite on, on a few of these players. Most teams only run with one sniper. We've seen multiple players picking up snipers on this squad. Yep, the biggest thing about the sniper as a power weapon, as a win condition type of weapon to make moves off of, when you have shock, as you can see right now in the inventory, right? Let's just take this example. You only have two chances to use that shock. You miss with a heavy snipe, depending on your heavy ammo count, which gets found in much bigger, you know, varieties of 7, 13 ammo yeah. spread around the map. You have so many more opportunities to land that heavy sniper throughout any point in the game game it's more expendable which means yeah. you can play off of it so much more frequently that's right and just taking a look here Yonks is gonna get a nice little power upgrade to the loadout there as he picks up a blue pump shotgun so you know the confidence is in their favor they're actually glancing over at the black stops they're not quite sure they saw a little bit of zombie aggro zombie movement uh you know from from the fiends here kind of lingering about and because of that they're they were cautious they knew a team was here when we first checked in with them seems like the coast is pretty clear and now they're gonna they're gonna focus on uh, taking off the pylons here yeah one thing i actually wanted to talk about we noticed retail and greasy coming in right we also made that little mistake with the houses the big thing though to note about that a lot of these house layouts are very similar a team that goes retail and periods of time now let's just say if if things were to just change and something new is to show up that could that could be you know a big issue for some of the competitors but hey the best of the best adapt and, and someone's gonna figure out how to make it work right absolutely you get the experience of playing in retail apply it to greasy you might just get a whole new drop spot right yeah there's taco time hey that's free shields that's as you said the free utilization of having a knockdown uh teammate just staying alive it's huge things you can play off of
and then you're trying to control the pace of the battle which again some people struggle right in those situations because if you don't do it properly the server will turn on you and now all of a sudden you're you're losing Yep, ever, there's always, there's so many teams alive near the end of the game, there's always one that can sense the weakness on height. Oh, yeah. oh you're double, you're not double tarping anymore, your metal switched to wood, here's an opportunity. Seeing exactly how they move across the map, how they utilize time can actually get into where they are in the middle and end game of their gameplay. Yeah, so they sent 
one player out to go kind of, you know, obviously get that revive, and then they stood, or, or they left Moon back behind to, you know, be that presence on the build, uh, the build on, on the skeleton that remains of what the fight was, so that the team below, you know, is, is cautious. They don't necessarily, you know, want to move or, or get that freebie rotation out of there. So the whole team is back. Now they're able to reap some of the rewards here, the, the loot that remains, and suddenly they're all back in action here. Now with that launch pad there, they are going to be okay to get the rotation. But remember, he did catch a knock, so notice. They, wanna, they just want to go ahead and take a peek. See who's left here. What kind of loot can they still kind of grab up before it's time to go? And it's a short rotation, so they don't need the launch pad either. Looks like they are going to decide to probably go on foot here. A short rotation, definitely risky, though. There are 65 people alive right now in the circle. Placement is a long ways away. Looks like Zanzis might be the last person in the trio from this fighter. One of the trios trying to move in. We'll see if it's possible for him to actually sneak through on this launch pad. Very patient gameplay there. Hopefully he has heals to come in. But this is the big problem with missed timing and getting in the zone a little bit later than you want. Kinji getting absolutely lit up in the air. Going to be launching down. Might have to use hard mats early on, which means he won't have them end game. Once again, you see these connections between early and end. Usually you don't get to see why people are in such positions, but these guys took fights. They have to respond with the appropriate materials and now they're actually turning gears to the offense i think they noticed this guy was solo right here on the left they do have a beam opportunity on the launch pad hopefully they get it. a lot of trees in the way though monster this is very interesting to see how these guys are kind of moving around the map to get in the zone mid game yeah so far so good again another little buff up to the loadout when you get that minigun suddenly now you you have the means to put the pressure up and tr zanzis is gonna fall there as they were relentless on the push they hunt him down they catch him down right there and that's gonna be a nice replenish for materials and loot of the sort and they're just they're big chilling right now they have everything they need medium you know light bullets mats are in a hurry because they're, they're asking for attention from the server but other than that the, the points are accumulating the the steam rails beginning here you know, the biggest thing to worry about is that zone still pulling up northeast over and over again. Mm -hmm. It means they have to move more vertically. There's already a hill in the way. Moving up pressure, you have to deal with lava, ever-changing ultimate low ground as well. There's so many things to take into account, and now they actually do have to move towards that way. The whole server could hold them back. We'll see if they use their utility to push through. And here, back with this team, we saw them earlier before execute a nice isolation and, and pinch push against a full trio. Looks like they're Setting up their next siege here. You saw a couple shots trading out. And interesting, middle, the, the ME region kind of surprising me here with how much they are using just everything in their arsenal to fully commit to these battles here. They're throwing stinkers, laying down fire, and then fully commit into rotations and box pushes here. So this is this is some aggressive play we're looking at, Shio. And, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime <laughs> soon. This is the type of play style we, we kind of signed up for here. We checked out this region, setting up the ramp boost right there. He's going to catch the 50-50 wall, but doesn't matter. Eagle isn't even looking. So catches that guy off guard. This little pick right there. I think the difference in this trio is that usually people look for weakness to apply stinks to. They make the map weak. They yep. make other trios weak first. Then they're like, oh, okay, these guys are weak. We're pushing in. They know exactly what fight they want to take. They actually make fights happen rather than sitting back and waiting for them. Right now, looks like these guys have four elims together. They're still affecting trios left and right, either picking up strays or making trios have just stray teammates. We'll see how much of an influence they have on the rest of the game because it looks like so far they've affected five different trios coming in from the bottom left side of the map. Yeah, Rampage actually took a lot of damage there, as does MSI Dig as well. And that's because the heavy sniper from the opponents nearby, they're just popping open those builds, following up with heavy AR fire. That's why they're able to, uh, unfortunately, that's why they lost a lot of health here. But now having to expend all their heals, it kind of seems like it wasn't worth it. The teams they've taken out didn't really reap big rewards here. Now they're in a weird situation, scrambling for health and loot. But it's okay. We're approaching zone five. It'll reveal itself in just 15 seconds. And then they'll have to make a big decision of whether they get to stay and kind of plan up or, you know, move out and, and use those shockwaves. The big thing about decisions is they're the easiest to make when you have a lot of options. Yeah. The fact that they've ran out of all this utility, 
all these shields limits their options. So now they have to play a certain type of way. They have to either find recyclable launch pads. Yes, they have the shockwaves, but then if they use them now, they lose the option as them for a win condition later in the game. So everything's kind of all on the plate now. They don't have any side dish available. No dessert coming up. It's one main course. They have to make sure it stays tasty. Hopefully they get in and it's an easy coming from them all the way to the later parts of the zone where they can utilize whatever utility they have left. Yeah, and this is a long rotation here, guys. They, they actually did not look out. The zone is pushing further and further away. Lucky for them, you can see the server is proactive. They're moving first, which is good because if everyone's on the move, it allows you to cut across the field. The team's up on high ground. Hopefully, wouldn't have had their Ooh. ARs loaded, but not the case here as Rampage gets chipped right out. He gets taken down the snowfly zone here. And he lands right next to the team. He's unsure of what he wants to do. He's trying to stay close but not fall down to you know, a layer where he cannot be saved. But it looks like that's it. This, that's it. This team split up. Rampage is out the game. Now it's, a, it's just a duo that remains here. This MSI dig and Sid dig here. Cooking up this minigun. This is a very precarious pressure point. So close to their opponents there. You can get punished in return with a shotgun. It's not going to be the case here as they're just dictating the push here. Jib goes down. It's going to be a nice catch for them. He actually just finished that. It wasn't even his Elan. So he's just trying to be really sneaky here. See if he can steal some of the rewards here from the down body. Little does he know, it's, it's right over lava. It's probably not even retrievable. Yeah, man, one big contingency off of coming off of a launch and losing your shield, it's a very risky, very, very risky play, is going towards another trio. Yeah. As you saw, they use another person's shield bubble because you attract all that heat. Maybe that trio doesn't want to deal with it. They're low on mats. They use their own resources, right? You turn three man's loot into six man's loot. The thing is, three of those people next to you are also not on your team. So as soon as they sense weakness, they turn right onto you. You saw that with Sadig here, who now has six HP, taking a whole minigun brawl from the trio that was closest to him, who was... He, he was utilizing their shield bubble to kind of take protection from, but once that ran out, they knew exactly what was up. Now we're moving into that six circle off of half and half. 45 people left alive, 19 trios still there, 70 to go down for placement. Yeah, so a lot of trios left in the game here, and this is a really weird spot to battle, especially with the low health. You don't want to step in the lobby. You can't really afford to, and the elevation is only going to rise here as they go up and over the volcanic mountain. This is one of the steepest points in the world of the Fortnite of the Fortnite world. This is similar to the a polar peak climb here. It's a very steep wall. You have to get up and over, and if they don't move soon, they're going to be stuck with their backs against the wall here. But you know what? It's more important, exactly, to try and pick up some siphon here. So Sigal going down there is going to be huge. That's going to at least uh, help Sid to get some health here if he can kind of hold out. A launch pad is going to be placed down in Upsy Daisy. Now into the next zone they go, and great tracking of his teammate here. Does a, that's actually a phenomenal job, even under the pressure and the circumstances that you know they, they found themselves in. Great job tunneling and, and finding his teammate. Yep, even off of height and mid-ground, you mentioned going through this weird zone that's very vertical, height still has a tough job actually tarping in and making sure they can actually shoot down on people while they're moving around because they have to change exactly how high they are. That's why you saw these guys not get beamed exactly where they were. You have such a dynamic placing of all the mid-ground layers as well, going up and down, changing layers based off of natural low ground because if you're too high, that's a threat, right? You want to be in the perfect position. Now they're using shockwave nades. The biggest thing about these, though, is when you're using them endgame, you do take a 10 tick every now and then. These guys only have about 60 to 70 HP to play with. So every one of these shockwaves must be perfect, and some could also be saved. Jiren actually going down for a huge siphon elim and Matza. These guys did need. They were almost shambles. Now they're not. The last almost shockwave coming in from Sadiq still taking ticks away from his teammate. Sadiq actually going down. Ensign is the one up here. Another Elim on Fahad. He goes down. RPG available as well. Looks like Sadiq actually caught up with him in that mid-ground there. Having mid-ground over here is such a big deal as well because you don't have to deal with any of the vertical pressure or low ground weirdness that goes on with the change of the map. That's some interesting uh, decision making right there. They split the shockwave saying, you know what, we can't afford to make any errors, right? We can't, we can't even shockwave together. Let's split up. Let's use our own shockwave so we can't make any mistakes. And that's what they're doing right here. They're trying to execute the perfect ways possible. Unfortunately, as I kind of brought it up, Dig does make a mistake there, and now he finds himself in an odd situation. He's in between all these enemies. His teammate's up on high ground. Up, he's trying to go to him. He's just landing in enemy boxes right now. That one big got to make a big move here, and he's going to get caught off guard there. Unfortunately, he did try to get that high ground. He was not fortunate enough to kind of secure the deal here. In comes the minigun pressure. This is an awesome job right here. NJ is going to fall down right there. The cycle has to come through here.
so you can get this health bonus. This is putting them in just a better and better situation as time ticks on. And it's looking like a solo right now. This is looking like a solo endgame here, if I'm not mistaken. Everyone representing and looking out for themselves here. There's a huge, heavy snipe shot right there. Diggs is going to get really hurt. Can he trade out a shot? This zone's going to go ahead and finish him off here. His power finds that one right there. And it's MN7 versus, versus this last player right here. There's only two players remaining, Shio. Yep, it's game four in Heat 1, and the competition is getting hot. We have a big pump coming in. ASMR Spy goes down the power ASMR. Rivalry finally ends in the end game. It's now a 1v1 to see who gets those final four points, three of placement, one for the Elam. Nice, big, easy, fast peaks coming down from NM7. Full lot of available. He does have that pump or shotgun delay since he has two tacks in. Will it make a difference? Almost not even out of mats at all. In Nice 180 tack shot from height, takes down DSQND for those big points in. Power is still on top. They can't be stopped right now. Huge game from them. That was wonderfully done for NM7. And with that, we're going to head over to the floor with Sundown to give us a nice little recap. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And we see the Middle East has been heating up in the action that occurred this morning. Honestly, I'm a big fan. I love watching it, watching the early games and the mid game, the discipline when the team goes, but also the little bit of chaos and kind of like fanaticism that happens in the end games when all of a sudden, just as Monster said, it turned into a solo game right there at the end. But let's dive in and see some of the plays that were made in the past game. And first, we're gonna hop on board with Toggle. His positional awareness and the fact that he's able to turn towards the rest of the storm and lay down these rifle shots means he's gonna find a number of elims here. And you can see the rest of his team has been down. It's a tale of people making individual strong efforts in the end game. We kind of talked about it before, how they stick very close together in the mid and early game. But we've seen now over and over again, teams aren't necessarily able to keep that discipline when uh, it starts getting hectic and all of these fights are going down. Players start dropping all over the place. Right now, Adam ZK able to find a number of picks using the minigun and the edits to get pressure, but unfortunately isn't clean enough to pick them up without taking back damage. Now you can see Adam is in shambles, so W Horse is trying to play the protector role, but they're in fights on the back of the storm, and this is where it starts to break down. Despite getting the siphon, everyone on their team needs to now regroup, and boom, we flip back over. W Horse, hold team is eliminated was able to pick up a number of elims five players left four trios in the match power and f from the low ground is able to pick up two elims in a row and then maintain his positioning through discipline and then close out in the 1v1 giving him a huge boost and these clutch factors is what's going to lift these players up particularly as we head into the grand final tomorrow i mean it has just been incredible watching the action so far and getting to see these guys really develop and continue on and i just want to see what else happens going forward we're going to throw it back into game with shawager and monster gentlemen take it away thank you sundown and yep the action has been real here shio that was an exciting last game there you saw for a second hey sundown pretty face we saw for a second there uh you know a couple a couple classic jump shotgun plays kind of keeping that high ground kept it real textbook there was a you know that was his game to lose if anything and, and having the mass to close out must be real good for the power uh trio has been showing up this weekend it's always dope to see a kind of mid-ground team hiding out and coming up off the top. The coolest thing to see is the journey from early to end of all the trios coming in and how the decisions they made earlier affected their end game in total at the end. Now we're gonna see everyone dropping out of the battle bus. Talk about the breakdown, Monster. Yep, here we are, guys. Middle East, Heat 1, Game 5 is underway, and we have a, a really odd split here. It's a southern cut on the bus, which makes it any teams in the north, northwest side are going to have a rough time cutting across that field. By the time they touch down, the zone is just about to reveal itself. So those, those valuable seconds can really cut away from your loot timing and, and your battle positioning period. So you can see anyone that you know, plays those southern areas has got that touchdown first. They're already getting to looting here. Yeah, we're going to tune in right back with Dennis Mev and Nonfu. We saw them have an amazing performance early on in the day. We're now Heat 1, Game 5, one game away from the final game of the Heat, kind of dictating who is in that top 16 scenario at Sunny Steps right now, uncontested. One big thing about this POI you want to have at all times is the actual POI uncontested. There's not that much loot to kind of split off on trios. It's a very easy game or an easy place on the map to disengage from. So if, if you have two trios contesting Sunny, 
and then one dips off, you leave both of you guys pretty much in a very shambles position. So it's very good right now. They have a lot to loot, and they have a lot of the jungle available around them to have some of that, you know, work spread out sparse loot on the map. Yeah, and one of the things about fighting within these pyramid structures, building's weird. Going outside the building to build on the pyramid itself is weird. Mats are kind of scarce, right? Even with the bonus uh, farm format, you know, when you hit stuff during in, in these arena settings, yeah, you gain a little more material, but you don't really gain much from these stone structures. So battling here in early game is a scary thing, especially if you don't get the loadout of choice. So for them to have it clear, clear as day right here, it's pretty nice. Very dope advantage they can see kind of pushing off into mid game. One big thing about having free early POIs as well, we talked about it earlier, options. They have so many yeah. options of what they want their actual loadout to look like. A lot of the time if a fight happens, you don't get to see a lot of the loot early. You kind of have to move on because zone's catching up. But right now, they basically have an entire buffet available and they get to pick every single thing they want to eat. It's amazing. We have Stinks, Medkits, Minis available. Now tuning in to H-Man up in Greasy Grove. Big Elims coming through, two back-to-back, -back, setting these guys up. No talk of time to stop the mid-game fight either. These guys are going to be moving through, have all the shield available and the whole POI free. Yeah, just like that, he wrapped that team up real quick. You saw a little bit of taunting coming out there from H-Man. You know, Dampton, a little premature before the taco time. It's okay. He's got to get his groove on somewhere or another. He's probably going to make it to his Instagram before the day's up. <laughs> Here, let's take a look at the loadouts. The loadouts, pretty rough. Just a shotgun, a couple shields, okay. Gonna be able to grab some of the spores of war here, and now we're talking. Now he's looking like a real Fortnite gamer here. He's got something to work with here in the uh, the, the game today. Hop in to farm up this metal. It's very nice. Gonna set him up for success. Yeah, it was like a super early game fight. You see the contrast of the actual loadout at the same time, right? We have full fleshed out loadouts all the way at Sunny, and now in Greasy, we have people just starting up. The big thing about having Greasy free as well is the farm rate and yeah. everything around that too. You have everything set up for you. The momentum's there. You're always comfortable, and it's a very easy way to kind of segment and know exactly when and what to build. You're never worried about missing anything mid-game. And also remember, ladies and gentlemen, Storm Surge is active, so honestly, you kind of want players to land on you at your POI. I know in a perfect world, you, you beat Storm Surge and you get a whole zone to yourself, but in the, in the real world, in the, in the real Fortnite world, it usually doesn't really work out like that. You want those free picks, those early picks. You want your, your enemies to, you know, botch their landing, not get the shotgun, pump them, catch them easy freebies. So getting those early game fights can be beneficial, especially if you, you know, master your craft. I think early game is one of the hardest you know, times are one of the hardest Fortnite things to master, really, I should say. Um, and a lot of teams struggle. Play, so there are some players that they can pop off in a lot of situations, but they can't really get their gears rolling. And they tend to struggle in early game. Yeah, with few mats available early, since you don't obviously farm out unless you find a llama, mm. and so many spots and natural cover to move around, it's very unpredictable, right? And the top player's worst nightmare is kind of being in a fight in an unpredictable scenario. You have to kind of react to what's on your screen. If you have more than one person focusing you down, that's even worse for you, right? You're always back against the wall. You want to have everything available for you. You want to have some room. So 100%, I agree. Early game is something that's very hard to perfect and very hard to kind of prep for when you're playing in the game. It usually just gets thrown onto you. And these guys are using all this retail row, kind of extra loot to really capitalize and, and find the perfect loadout. So Yance is going to get a big upgrade, upgrade right there, going from a, a great tactical shotgun up to a legendary shotgun. Legendary tactical, we've seen multiple players, even even in that you know rare European game one we got to catch. And I'll call it rare because you guys know the issues that kind of unfolded today. We saw players, pro players, taking the gold tack over the blue pump, even when 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 it needed most, players needed it the most, right? You needed that one pump. People were still opting to, to rock out with the gold tack. Yeah, the meta for a lot of players and the way they play and take peaks, they use the combat for so much mm. time of the season. They're used to having more bullets to send through. They're used to having, you oh, know, the fire rate. Yeah, the fire rate as well, right? It's just the biggest thing they're not used to and they have to kind of adjust to is the pullout time of that gold and purple tack because it is slower than all the other shotguns up available right now in the loot pool. Here's Zanzis. So they're going to use hoverboards to get away from the trio that's to the left, or maybe they didn't even realize they're actually firing off in the distance there. So. Little do they know, someone is already up close and personal, but there it is. The sound cue is given off, and he's actually spotted by Zephyr, who's got the perfect pinch on this player. And Zanzis, who's got the nice range as well with the with the explodes here. Shield Bubble is going to isolate this player from Zephyr. Zephyr loses the 1v1. 
Shibobo absolutely isolates. The big thing about this side of the map, too, is how spread out and isolated you are from the get-go. So much of a split is going on just for looting purposes that when a fight starts, you have to act quick to get back to your team. Fast builds from Zanzas, though. Shockwaves coming through. Still a block off. The tack shot's not missing a single one out of eight in his clip. Zanzas is on point right now. Metal's not going to stop his beam from coming through into your box. A two-way split on pressure on the box as well. I hear a minigun in there, too, Monster. This is... Normally, when it's me and I got...
Yonks has eliminated Fahad and Emmett and M7 sit, sitting on the ultimate high ground. The minigun.